Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jen J, and we're back with another video. Today's lesson is going to be all about hair porosity. What is it? How can you find out your hair porosity level? How can you use all of that information to better your hair care routine? So if you're interested, then keep on watching. Before we get started, however, HR told me to let y'all know that you should hit the subscribe and the bell button so you get notified every single time I upload a new video. Also, follow me on Instagram where I post about hair care, beauty, makeup, self-care. So if that sounds like your thing, follow me over there. So, what is porosity? Porosity refers to the state or quality of being porous or full of pores. In terms of hair, when we talk about hair porosity, we're referring to your hair's ability to absorb and retain moisture. So if you have 4C hair, you know it's a struggle to keep our hair moisturized. So knowing your hair porosity level will actually help you understand your hair a lot better, understand how to moisturize your hair, which products to use to moisturize your hair so that you can take better care of your hair. So let's get a little sciencey a little bit. When we're talking about the hair strand and for the sake of porosity, we are focusing on the outermost layer of the strand, which is called the cuticle. Your hair strand is actually composed of three different components. The medulla, which is the innermost layer of your hair. The cortex provides strength, moisture, color, and texture of your hair. And the cuticle is the outermost layer. This one protects the cortex. If you can think of the roof of a house, the shingles that's laying on top of the roof that prevents moisture from going in or water from going inside your house that's basically what the cuticle is like science but i don't want to get too sciencey and lose you guys what i wanted you to understand is where the cuticle layer is it's the outermost layer of your hair and your hair porosity level is directly related to the state of your cuticles are they open are they closed shut are they missing all of that information will help determine your hair porosity level. Your hair porosity level is typically determined by genetics, however heat and chemical damage can affect your hair porosity. With that said, there's three types of hair porosity. There's low porosity, medium or normal porosity, and high porosity level. So let's quickly talk about medium porosity because honestly, I just wanna get it out of the way. Basically, your hair is normal. It requires the least amount of maintenance, it holds styles very well, and can be colored or treated with predictable results. However, blow drying, bleaching, straightening, using harsh chemicals, overwashing your hair, all of that over time can damage your cuticle layer and raise your porosity. That's because these treatments are so harsh on our hair that they can actually damage our cuticle and sometimes literally we end up having missing cuticles on our hair strand so it becomes harder for you to retain moisture after that all right now let's get to the juicy stuff let's figure out if you have low or high porosity how do you know if you have low porosity hair you can tell you have low porosity hair if your cuticles looks like this Basically, your cuticles are closed shut, making it difficult for moisture and water to get inside of your hair. You'll notice that you have a lot of product buildup. Product doesn't absorb easily into your hair. Basically, they just sit on top of your hair. You'll also notice that your hair does not take color very well or doesn't get processed easily. It takes longer for your hair to get processed. It also takes a long time for your hair to get fully saturated with water. Sometimes you'll notice water beads forming on top of your hair or little water droplets just sitting on top of your hair. It's not being absorbed. It's not easily going inside your hair. It's just chilling on top of your hair. On the other hand, it takes a lot longer for your hair to dry. So as hard as it is to get water in, it's hard to get water out. Also, if you use a lot of thick or heavy butters, you'll notice that it can be too much for your hair or just sit on top of your hair. It's not being absorbed. Low porosity hair is often protein sensitive. That's because the protein will not get absorbed into your hair. It'll just sit on top of your hair strands and that will just make your hair stiff. So stay away from proteins if you have low porosity hair. Now, if you have high porosity hair, your cuticles will look like this. So now this is the complete opposite from low porosity hair. Your cuticles are open, open for business. She is ready. As easy as it is for water to get in your hair though, it's not staying there. So easy in, easy out. 
You may notice that your hair gets tangled easily. That's because the cuticles are raised and when your hair is rubbing against each other, it's actually, you know, creating these tangles. You'll notice that your hair dries extremely fast. So as soon as you get out of the shower, it's over. Hair lotion and hair milk may be too light to keep water inside of your hair. So you may notice that they don't really do anything for your hair. And also, high porosity hair actually love protein treatments. That's because the cuticles are damaged and some protein treatment can actually fill in the gaps where the cuticles are missing or can actually help lay the cuticles down. All right, so before you jump the gun with the information that you just learned and determine your hair porosity level, there's actually a few tests that you can do that can help you figure out what your porosity level is. But I have to warn you though, these tests are highly unreliable. I'll tell you why as we talk about them. So the first test is called the flow test. That's when you take a cup of water, you take a few strands of hair, put it in the water and see what happens. So if your hair floats, then you have low porosity hair. If it sinks to the bottom, then you have high porosity hair. If it stays somewhere in the middle, then you have normal or medium porosity. There's a lot of mixed reviews about this test just because there's so many variables that can affect your results. For example, the temperature of the water, if it's too warm, then that would actually open up the cuticles of your hair and that would affect your results. There's surface tension on top of the water that can actually prevent your hair from sinking. So you may think you have low porosity hair, but you don't. Hair typically has oils in it, for example, sebum. So that would actually prevent your hair from sinking in. Again, you will think you have low porosity hair, but then you don't. Some people say to use clean hair to do this test, but I still think that it's not enough to give you accurate results. The other test that you can do, at least that people talk about, is called the slip and slide test. What an interesting name. Anyways, that's when you take a strand of your hair and run your hand in the opposite direction. If you're feeling little bumps along the way, then it means that your cuticles are lifted and you have high porosity hair. If your hair is smooth, then you have low porosity hair. I personally don't think porosity is that simple for you to be able to feel your cuticles. I mean, we're talking about molecular level. You're not gonna feel your, your cuticles. And also, your hair may just have a bunch of single strand knots. There's a few other tests that are a little bit less popular, but I thought I'd mention them anyway. So once you shower and you have your hair wet, just get out of the shower and wait to see which one dries faster. Is it your hair or is it your body? If your hair dries first, then you may have high porosity hair. As we talked about earlier, high porosity hair dries extremely fast. If your body dries first, then you may have low porosity hair. Again, as we mentioned, it takes a lot longer for low porosity hair to dry. But who is just standing around naked after they take a shower? Not me. The other test that is a bit less popular is the spray bottle test. I don't know if this one even has a name, but that's when you take a spray bottle, spray your hair and see what happens. Is the water being absorbed or is it sitting on top of your hair and forming little droplets or water beads? If you see that happening, then you likely have low porosity hair. And if the water is being absorbed, then you have high porosity hair. So with all of these home tests and all of that information, how do you really know what your hair porosity is. How do you not get confused? The best way for me, and that's the one that I stand by, is honestly to analyze your hair and study its behavior. So ask yourself the following questions. Does your hair dry extremely fast after you moisturize your hair? If it does, then you likely have high porosity hair. Does your hair acquire buildup easily? Has a hard time receiving moisture, but once it is moisturized, it stays moisturized for a few days? If that's the case, then you likely have low porosity hair. And if you honestly don't have any of these problems, grow back. You have normal porosity hair. I think by asking yourself these questions will really force you to study your hair, analyze your hair, play in your hair, experiment with your hair, and that's most important if you wanna find out your hair porosity level. At the end of the day, use this information as a guideline because your hair may behave a little bit differently than what's in a category, and that may confuse you even more. For example, according to the flow test, I'm high porosity. And I just recently tested my hair. I haven't done it for a really long time, but I have been taking care of my hair for years. By now, I know what my hair likes, and I know that my hair likes heavy, thick butters to keep it moisturized. That's a sign of high porosity hair. However, my hair hates proteins. 
No. The fact that my hair hates protein so much would make me think that I have low porosity hair, but I think my hair doesn't like protein because I have high porosity hair, but my hair isn't damaged. It could just be genetics. High porosity hair is often referred to as damaged or highly processed hair. I have to disagree with that though because I think all damaged hair is high porosity, but not all high porosity hair is damaged. Think about that for a second. So I wanted to quickly walk you through my flow test. So I use shedded hair and it just sat on top of the water. So after five minutes, I went ahead and poked it. And as you can see, it sunk right to the bottom. And the reason why I poke it is because of surface tension on top of the water that would actually prevent your hair from going in. But I wasn't entirely convinced, so I used clean shampooed hair that I let dry, put it on top of the water, same thing, it floated, and after I poked it, it went straight down to the bottom. So now let's move on to tips on how to moisturize your hair based on your porosity level. If you have low porosity hair, there's a few things that you could do to help moisturize your hair. Steam your hair or add heat when you are deep conditioning. That will help open your cuticles so that the products can actually get absorbed into your hair. Avoid silicones, heavy butters, thick oils. Low porosity hair is prone to build up, so you wanna be careful with that. Try to experiment with some lighter oils such as grapeseed oil, avocado oil, almond oil. Clarify your hair frequently depending on the products that you're using. So I will say maybe once a month or once every two months. The best way to remove product buildup is by clarifying your hair and you will know you have product buildup if your hair is limp and if your scalp is flaky. For high porosity hair, there's a few things that you can also do to effectively moisturize and keep the moisture in your hair. That's key. For me, I use a lot of heavy butters, heavy oils, so that will coat my cuticles and keep the moisture in. I personally like shea butter, um, castor oil, those kind of thick oils and butters. Layering products is your best friend, so you can use a leave-in conditioner, a butter and an oil, or leave-in conditioner, oil and butter, whatever you prefer. Experiment a little bit, but you wanna layer your products so that Again, you're coating the cuticles and helping the moisture stay in. Aloe vera and apple cider vinegar is actually pretty good for high porosity hair because they balance the pH level of your hair and that can help smooth out your cuticles. And my least favorite way is to have a cold water rinse before you hop out of the shower after washing your hair. I don't like that one. Because highly porous hair loses water or moisture so easily, it's very important for you to seal in that moisture. Use a sealant after you moisturize your hair. And I'm so sorry, but you are gonna have to moisturize more often. So every couple of days or every three days, you may have to go in and moisturize your hair again. Honestly, I've given you so much information about hair porosity. Right now I have a question for you. What is your hair porosity level? If you know, leave a comment down below. I think the best way for you to really know your hair porosity level is to experiment with your hair. Don't get so caught up with all of the different methods that are out there, especially when it comes to porosity. There's so many confusing information out there. So make sure that you are experimenting with your hair and finding what it likes. That's most important, that's key. I've spent years not knowing what my hair porosity was, but I've taken care of my hair. And once you do a few things that your hair doesn't like, it'll, t it'll tell you. She will let you know. She is very vocal. My hair lets me know. She'll be checking me all the time. You have to keep in mind that your porosity level can actually be different all over your hair. So, food for thought. There's also products on the market that are targeted towards your porosity level. I know Shea Moisture actually has a line for low porosity hair. I've never used products especially catered to porosity. Like I said, I've basically just experimented with my hair and find what it like. But if that's something that you want to try, you have that option. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Like this video so I know that you liked it. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.